I decided to make a simulation of special relativity because it's something that's really hard to visualize. You get the idea that length is contracted, and even at A level, even on the turning points option for AQA, all you really hear about is that length is contracted along one dimension, but that doesn't give you a feel for what it looks like when lengths are contracted. Now, there is a fantastic game made by MIT called A Slower Speed of Light. The premise of that is that the speed of light is slowed down so that you can see the effect of special relativity in three dimensions as you're walking around this three-dimensional environment in the first person. Now, in that game, light is slowed down so that you see there is deformed shapes. When you stop, they look normal. When you move, they all start to look deformed. You also have the effects like red shift and blue shift, and you get the spotlight effect and all sorts of other things happening. Well, I wanted to run that program. It's great, but there's two problems. The first one is it's a game, and you have to walk around collecting watermelons or something to slow the speed of light down, which is a bit tedious. Second thing is it requires good enough hardware to run, and that's not fantastic hardware. And I've got a nice computer at home that can run it very well, but I don't want to bring that into school, and my school computers aren't great. So I thought I would write my own, and I wrote it using the language with which I am most familiar, BASIC. It is not obsolete, despite the fact that everyone says it is. If I'm the only person using it, it's still very useful. Anyway, so I wrote a BASIC computer program in order to simulate special relativity and length contraction in two dimensions. Weren't, wasn't able to do three dimensions. And it started like this. I looked out at the classroom, saw all the benches, and thought, what would happen if I walked between them fast enough? What would they look like? And so I have here drawn an array of rectangles, which are flickering slightly in yellow. They represent that array of desks. And the pink thing, this spaceship in the middle, that could be me as an observer. So if I press up, you can see the effect there. Now, it will automatically teleport me to the bottom when I go off the screen. And I can increase my speed, which you can see written in the top left, 2.9 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And if I go a nudge higher, it's not actually 3 times 10 to the 8. It's just really, really close to it. So it rounds to 3 times 10 to the 8 on that screen. And you can see the effect of special relativity. If I pause it, you can see the desks no longer have the same shapes they did. Let's unpause it for a second and let's draw the original desks in place. Let's pause it again. You can see where the desks have been deformed and moved from their original positions. If I slow down, the length contraction effect becomes less pronounced. If I slow down slow enough, you can't see it at all. And if I go backwards, well, I get exactly the same effect because that's how length contraction works. So that's all good fun. And, of course, you can't just move along one dimension. Where would the fun in that be? You can move around in circles and see what happens as you move around these desks to the shape of the desks. And I can pause it at any point and have a look at it. And, oh, yes, that's very interesting. And unpause it. It looks very pretty. It's very fun. And you've got to think, for protons moving in a particle accelerator around a big ring close to the speed of light, then for their perspective, this is what everything would look like. And then I realized, well, this isn't from their perspective, is it? This is a lie, because I'm looking at it from the reference frame of the desks. Now, from the reference frame of the desks, it's the spaceship that would be contracted, because from the reference frame of the desks, it's the spaceship which is moving. Very foolish of me. It's easy enough to code it so that we shift our perspective, so that we are on the reference frame of the spaceship. Now, that is the correct perspective now. The spaceship is at rest, so it's the proper shape and size. And everything that's moving, well, that's what appears to be deformed. So let's get rid of the original desks, because they cause a little bit of confusion visually. And we can see the deformation of the desks there. And I can change my angular velocity like this, so I can move and explore these desks. And how they appear warped, contracted, only along the vertical axis running through the spaceship. 
because it is the radial component of velocity that is used to determine the length contraction. Oops, I teleported off the edge of the screen there, off the edge of the uh, classroom. Maybe I should draw some boundaries on here. Now, that's all very interesting. I, I, I like seeing this. I think it is very interesting. You know, you can move through a rectangle and you can make it look completely different. So, they take a look at the rectangle that's directly in front of me. It's been warped so much there that it's no longer a rectangle at all. One of the angles is completely reversed and now it's a, a circumflex angle rather than um, what was an obtuse angle before. Okay, so this happens sometimes. The keyboard gets stuck and I have to press a button to make the angular velocity zero. It doesn't matter. It's very, very pretty. But actually, that's not accurate either, because when I drew this, I was plotting the positions of the vertices of the rectangles. And what about the lengths? Well, here they're all drawn as straight lines, but they won't be. Now, I'm coming up against the limitation of running basic in DOSBox, which is part of the problem here. So if, you know, if, if they carried on developing BASIC properly, like I used QBase, uh, QB64, for example, I'd be able to do much more with it. I'm not using QB64 because I'm running this on a simple Chromebook with DOSBox. So I am using the old version of Quick Basic 4.5. And so there are limitations on memory. It's not great. It means that I can't just put a static image on the screen and then deform, I should say, warp each pixel. But what I can do is choose a single square. Let's slow our speed down to zero. I can choose a single square. Let's make it so that I'm stationary. Let's put myself like this. Something like that. Ugh, single square. And I can look at that single square um, from my perspective which is going to be good fun. Now, the reason why I'm going to use a single square is because instead of just having one length along the edge, I could have multiple um, elements to that. So let's just quickly switch the shape across. There we go. It looks a bit like a rectangle. Indeed, it is a rectangle. I rotate myself around here. So my angular velocity to all of the vertices here is zero because all I'm doing is rotating. So nothing's actually moving further away from me or closer to me. And so it looks just like a normal square. And if I can position myself so that I am here, let's just move myself forward nice and slowly because I don't want to give the game away and ruin the relativity that we're going to see in a moment. Let's position myself so that I'm along one of the edges like this. Okay, let's go see what it looks like when I approach this square. Okay, so now you can see the curvature. That's 2.8 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. You can now see the curvature of those lines. Well, close to the curvature of those lines. Each of those lines has... 16 elements to it, which is uh, why we can see the curve when I connect those dots together. Those 16 elements are actually still straight lines, but you can see how things get deformed now. And we can try and go around this box, this square, like this, and you can see how everything seems to be deformed, warped, because of the relative velocity, the relative um, radial component of velocity. Move through it like this. It's all very, very pretty. What did the original look like? The original looks like that. So if length contraction didn't happen, that's what the shape would look like. Length contraction does happen, so instead it looks like the yellow shape, not the white shape. And if I'm going really close to the speed of light, the lengths are so contracted that I'm basically touching them all the time along the direction I am moving. I mean, that's just really fun to play with to get a feel for how this special relativity stuff works. Let's slow ourselves down a bit. 
There we are. That is the deformation that we see, or the warping that we see at 2 times 10 to the 8, which is the speed that light travels through water. Near enough, uh, through glass, near enough, not water, through glass. And you can see the effect of relativity there. And I think that's quite cool. And I hope you do too. Let's just go have a look at the grid again. Yeah, you can see it's not quite as good when you have straight lines as when you've got those curves. You really get a feel for what's going on. And this would, ha this would be happening in three dimensions, not just two dimensions. But, you know, if you can see it in two, you can visualize it in three. I'm going to stop playing with this now. Not that I want to. Uh, I guess you might want to have a quick glance at the code. Might as well. So if I just exit out of this. Uh, I've got a few functions in here. So let's go to subs. I've got the old arctan2 function there, which is an arctan which actually gives you a proper range of angles. I've got a simple Pythagorean distance between vertexes and where my spaceship is. I've got the gamma function, and you can see here if the speed is too high, um, you know, it equals the speed of light, then I set gamma to equal the biggest, whoops, the biggest number that could be stored. Um, or at least something close to the biggest number that could be stored because gamma would approach infinity as the speed of light approaches as the speed of the relative as the relative radial component of velocity approaches the speed of light so that's as good as i can do for that um, speed calculation that's just another bit of pythagoras in there and so in terms of code dimensioning variables some keyboard handling in here um, initializing the shapes from a big list of data at the end. What does the keyboard do? Just like that. The only interesting bit of the code is uh, where we do the transformations, which is this bit of code here. We're using arctang2 to figure out the, dis the direction to the vertex. Again, the resolution angle by the difference of the two angles. The speed to the vertex by resolving our speed in that direction. Then calculating gamma from that particular speed, um, radial component of, of velocity, or speed, because we square it anyway, so it doesn't matter. Contracted distance, calculated by doing the distance to the vertex divided by gamma. That's how length contraction works, as you learn about in A-levels. Um, and then, depending on whether we're looking at it from the first or the third person perspective, um, is, is what, what we actually draw. So that's where the points come in here. It's just saying that your position plus this contracted distance in a particular direction is the new position of that vertex or from the middle of the screen and using the resolution angle if we're looking at it in the first person. So that's all that's doing. It's a massive 640 by 480 resolution on this screen mode. And then everything else is just handling the graphics, drawing the spaceship, um, erasing the old lines to draw in the new one. They flicker a little bit, but not as bad as an older version of this program did. Bit of a delay chucked in just to make sure it doesn't run too fast, although actually we're being held back by DOSBox, so it doesn't matter. Some more keyboard stuff. You know, this was part of the error checking. I wanted to put a breakpoint just on there so that I um, could stop the program mid loop when I was interested. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um. Going down here, so this is swapping two values. You can't just swap two variables. You have to actually stick them into a third value first. Um, so don't worry too much about that. And then the, the, the easiest way to deal with the shapes was just to um, spam the coordinates of the different vertices. Um, there we go. So these are the different elements that are drawn. Each of these represents four lines a line between those two vertices, a line between those two vertices, a line between those two vertices, and a line between those two vertices. So that's four lines for each of these, which is why the final point of one shape is the same as the initial point of the next shape. In that particular bit, if we're looking at big square, if we're looking at the array of rectangles, then the final point should be equal to the first point, so it forms a closed shape. That's all that is. Anyway, Let's go back to running the game again. It's not a game. Let's go back to running the program again. That's not correct because our 
perspective is wrong, we should be in the uh, reference frame of the ship if we are seeing length contraction of the space around the ship. So switch the view. There we are. Just like that. And this is really my favorite one. If you want the code, I'm happy to send it to you. Just ask. It's not very pretty, but it, it works. It works quite well. And QBasic is not a dead language.